I'm sorry. That's Booby. And Vita and Chip and Colby. Uh, haven't updated my uh, Middle America with Vin and Sorry thing in a couple days, but I should. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's always so much. Big homie Trump. Oh, God. Uh, if you want to check it out, that's also where you get notifications for Fireside events. Um, subscribe to the channel, Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Mm -hmm. If you want to see behind the stuff, behind the scenes stuff with our family, like check out my channel, My Story Life. Also, we're going to be getting ahead on our videos for when the baby's born. So you'll have like... I'll still be pregnant even though I'm not pregnant. <laughs> um, but if you want to know like more of what's actually happening, you want to keep an eye on My Sorry Life because I might still put up, you know, quick updates and stuff on that channel. So Sorry also does hangouts and stuff. She did a hangout. Yeah, we she did, did a, a hangout, hangout yesterday yep. on, from her channel. Yep. So there you are. <laughs> this song well, is uh, a classic. I it's, feel like I probably heard it's this one. one of those where you know, I am guarantee you know the chorus and you don't know anything else. Hot or, or the line, Hotel California. Yeah, <laughs> so, so this song <laughs> was actually banned in my house. Wh why? Because we went to this church meeting one time and this visiting pastor showed up. Anytime you go to a Pentecostal church and a visiting pastor shows up, it's not good. Anyway, he had this talk about how... Um, you know, Satanism in the music industry. Yeah. And I guess he went to this, I, you know, I was like four or five years old, so I just completely zoned out. But he went on this thing about how Hotel California is really a code for hell and and you're, you go to hell and selling your soul to the devil. And really? that's how this band got, for whatever reason, I always thought this, this was about, this was Led Zeppelin. But it's not. It's from this band called the Eagles. So, what do you know? <laughs> We're going to get crucified for that. But, I don't know. But anyway, it was supposed to be this, like, demonic, devilish song that, you know, was... Really? Was, was, I never yeah. heard anything about that. I remember oh, yeah. hearing, like, that You probably that didn't even know that the band exhorts... No, but you know how, like, other stuff, like, like Highway to Hell, everybody was like... <gasps> Well, Stairway to Heaven. Well, oh! Highway to Hell makes sense. They're trying to mess. Stairway to Heaven. Does that make sense? Uh, I'm pretty sure Zeppelin did that one. Zeppelin did do that one. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Not, I'm not completely crazy. We probably would have done that already if it wouldn't have, wouldn't have got blocked. Did we do yeah. Stairway to Heaven? I don't. Honey, you don't have my memory, babe. I don't know. We've done. All. We're running up on close to 700 uh, thingamajigs. So. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm actually really excited to look at the lyrics here because yeah, yeah this guy went through this. About? This guy went through this big thing, and I guess my my stepdad, you know, Mr. Man, he used to listen to everything, so he didn't really agree with it. But if my mom said it wasn't in the house, forget it. <laughs> so all right, ready? Just back to his jazz stuff and and Bob Marley. That's all he could listen to because that Pentecostal preacher showed up, that was, and we couldn't play cards for like a. Three or four years, either. Three or four years? Because well, yeah, the cards were, I guess, metaphors for the devil, too. The whole thing was about the devil. Cards. Playing you know cards. What? It's so funny because, you know how I grew up, I came up real strict. That's why I don't know, like, barely any of the, the music or the songs. Um, so, but I remember people saying, are you guys allowed to play cards? And we always were allowed to play cards. Like, that was never a thing. Yeah, you guys and they missed were like, it. Yeah. That was a big thing. But my cousins, they were not allowed to play cards. And I remember people asking, like, what is people's thing with cards? I felt like, I was like, yeah, we must be, like, bad. I didn't think badass because I didn't swear. But, like, I was basically thinking that. Cause you were like, living we, on the edge. We played with cards. Yeah, yeah, so we were only allowed to play dominoes. You thought we were one of those weird Christian families. <laughs> <laughs> we well, funny. play it's cards. Funny. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're allowed to play dominoes, just not cards. But is dominoes, is there a problem with dominoes? No. There were, the dominoes are just numbers and, you know, whatever. Oh. But, but yeah, playing cards, playing cards, forget it. Couldn't do it. The Devil's Bible, that's what they say on uh, All right. the Walton. So let's let's dig into this, and I'm like gonna like <laughs> try to find out how that. Yeah, how, how did this, they get there from How here? this equals that they sold their soul to the devil. All right. Ready? <laughs> Go. Go.
guy's got two guitars. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good though. This guy's a badass. It's like a 12 string guitar. Yeah.
Jeez. I liked it. <laughs> A lot of respect to the big homies. Yeah. A lot of respect to them. <laughs> Still giving it to Pearl Jam for the, uh, what was the song? Yeah, Black. Black, Black uh, yeah. Black was yeah, a... Yeah, nobody can take that, but... Uh, I hope that this video doesn't get blocked because the, those two guitarists really, really... Oh, I know. Yeah. It, but that, if this gets blocked, we'll put the link in the description so you can... We always see say the, we never do. Eventually we'll get it. You always say that, you never do. No, when people remind me and then I put it. Yeah. That's... Literally what I just I said. I know, but I'm saying it does get there. <laughs> yeah, like like that that end that end riff, the um the da -na -na, da -na -na, yeah. that looks pretty simple to play. I mean it's not <laughs> but it, it's it was da -na -na. like it yeah, was like, I, uh, I loved it. I love stuff. I love simple stuff like that. That is so good. I bet you anything what year was this? Seventy six? This got released in 76. I bet you anything, like, a bunch of kids were like, because you can play. You oh, can, you yeah. Can, you yeah. Can, you can figure that out. I bet you that that solo is like, Yep. you know, you can play it. It's kind of, uh, that's a good solo. My favorite solo is going to be uh, Fade to Black, Kirk Hammett. Mm. That's a, to me, that's the best solo mm -hmm. of all time. But this one, this one is, uh, and then that other one from Leonard Skinner, the one that went on for like 10 minutes. Yep. Yep. The, uh, I forgot I don't the name. I, the name I, I forget either, the name. Yeah. I feel bad because these are like, I'm sure this classic songs, and I don't know. I forgot the name. It was like a 10 minute solo from Leonard Skinner. It was badass, but um, but I liked how they 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 looked like they really enjoyed each mm -hmm. other. Like they they really yeah. liked. It. I don't know what these guys are doing now. Yeah. But, um. Some chemistry. I actually knew this one. Like, I even knew, like, some of the stuff from the... I mean, obviously, I was reading the lyrics when I was, like, kind of singing along you with it. You knew this but one? Yeah. You know why? Because I used to work at this, like... Well, it was supposed to be, like, a little ritzy store. So, they used to play, like, all these older songs. And this was one of the songs that would come... That would come on. I'm actually salty that you know this song and I don't. But the only reason is, is because of that freaking preacher. I, I probably would have heard this song if it wasn't for... Yeah. That stupid ass preacher. But I shouldn't say that. Stop for a while. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even process what you were saying. Because I, I was too busy I thinking, yeah, that. I knew something. Brother. I That's my brother. That's my brother. Finally knew some song. But There's a lot but, of songs so you was, know that I don't. But there, There's a lot of them? Well, not really. a lot of Christian songs. Oh, wow. Like you with Christian songs is like me with this stuff. Not really. That's true. You not really, because... Okay, so you heard okay, this song. But where? yeah, it would play like at that... It, it, was, a, it was like a... A clothing store that I would work out, but work at and stuff, and they would play like different older songs, and this one was one of them that would come across. Some of them were like super annoying to me, but this one when it would come on, I you always liked it. liked it. Yeah. What stuck out to you about the song? I liked his voice. Uh, and the way that the the instruments went. I, I've only <laughs> two words from this song. It was Hotel California. <laughs> that, that that's that shows up in so many things. Yeah. Hotel California. Um, and then, did I ever tell you about my buddy Robin? This is the other. This is why I thought it was Led Zeppelin. Now I know why I thought it was Led Zeppelin. Why? Because my buddy Robin, he was when we were when we were not me and you, but when we were living in Augusta, mm -hmm. it, it, he was like basically forty five years old, white dude. Yeah. But he he basically adopted us because we were. I had just got out of the hospital. Oh, yep, yep. And it was this church. We went to this very old school church. The women couldn't speak at all. I don't even think they were able to sing during worship, 
and it was just hymnals, no instruments, no nothing. But they weren't even able to ask questions during Bible study. It was that Did type of church. Did you show up in your whole Oh, up? yeah. We, I showed, she, just, she showed up with her Metallica thing and her choker and freaking, you know, Unforgiven. The guy had a noose or whatever, and I showed up in my corn shirt and my black nail polish. And, and they were like, what the hell? But they were like, <laughs> come in! Come in! <laughs> oh my God. Come in! But, like, so Robin had this friend named Paul... And Paul was a big classic metal guy. Yeah. But they would, Robin was always trying to convert Paul, so they would talk about, so Robin started talking to him about the dangers of rock and roll. Paul's favorite band was Led Zeppelin. Yeah. But they got in a conversation about this, and that's why I thought that the Zeppelin did it. Oh. It's because Robin, it's because of Robin I and see. Paul. I we see. would just be at Denny's eating because he'd buy us Denny's every Sunday. He was such a good person. Such a good person. Aww. Um. <clears throat> But but yeah, he um they they and and Paul was just like you could tell that they loved each other because they were friends with they went to school together uh -huh. and they're now in their forties, you know, and, and Paul was just like <laughs> he couldn't understand like what is wrong with you. But anyway, that's why I thought it was Led Zeppelin. So there you go. What do I know? All right. But all the time I thought it was um when hold on, scroll scroll down a little stop, but wait, wait, stop. It was like the first the first stanza I need to see. Uh, warm smell of colitas. I always thought they were saying culatas. It's probably the same thing. Oh, okay. A colita is probably a drink. On a desert highway, cool wind in my hair. Warm smell of colitas rising up through the air. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a shimmering light. Okay, could you see how somebody could could see this as like hell? Like you sold your soul and now you ended up in hell? No, that's not what I thought at all. Every time that I heard this playing, I just thought it was like this guy showing up to a hotel and then there was a sexy woman by the door and then they went and had a good night. That's And I always thought the whole thing was about, which is probably why I liked it. <laughs> the SS Sorry, here we go. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven, this could be hell. Yeah, because... Then the girl know. lights up a candle... Yeah. And then he and she showed him the way. He had one line where he says, You can check out any time, but you can't leave. Yeah. That part That's hell. Like, yeah. Like, that you part, can, you like, can say, I'm leaving. And I don't remember hearing Look, that. And I don't remember running, hearing the mirrors on the ceiling either. He's, he's running to the door. We're all just prisoners here. I never heard any of this stuff. Yeah, there's like, enough here for, for a person of, <laughs> of to build that case. Well, I could see why people would take it as a metaphor for hell. Yeah. Because he, he doesn't know if it's heaven or hell. Yeah. Here's the thing. If, if you wake up in the afterlife and you're not sure where you are, it's probably not a good place. <laughs> <laughs> right. It should be abundantly clear. <laughs> if, 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 you're, if, you're, uh, if you're with the A and Soph, you'll know it. Yeah. That's why I always say so-and-so's with the A and Soph, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Uh, she lit up a candle. It's fire. I no, don't know. That, mean, that would mean there's darkness. Darkness. No parents. So that. So is that what you think this is about? No. Well, I was kind of going back and forth because because I halfway through I remembered Robin and Paul having their little mm -hmm. jihad in the in Denny. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to look at this through Robin's eyes, mm -hmm. and then I wanted to look at it through Paul's eyes. Yeah. It was like so no. What did you come up with? Paul said I forgot what Paul said it was about. I have no idea what Paul said it was about. I was just so focused on Robin because. Well, what do you think it's about? Um, like I, I, I said what I thought it was always about, but but then there was like some other things that I was like, wait. California. Well, the second verse. Her mind is Tiffany twisted. She got the Mercedes Benz. Well, Tiffany twisted isn't like Tiffany's is a like a really really expensive jewelry place. Tiffany's. Tiffany's, yeah. The only she thing got I know the Mercedes about is, Benz. That's a really expensive car. Oh, there's a song. Something, something. Breakfast at Tiffany's. I thought it was like some famous restaurant. Tiffany's is a. I well, no, Tiffany's your interpretation was, makes more sense. I thought cause Tiffany's it, was because I thought I remember like my friends from college. No, like, what you better I'm, get me no, a ring from Tiffany's. No, I'm saying yours makes more sense because the next thing is a, the Mercedes Benz, right? So yeah. Okay, so so yeah, she's, Tiffany's is it's a jewelry company. Okay, so breakfast at Tiffany's is probably I don't know I don't, I don't even know what that's about. I don't either. But uh, her mind is Tiffany twisted. Okay, so she's just wants all this expensive jewelry. She's got the Mercedes. Is it a bands. guy that's singing breakfast at Tiffany's? 
Yeah, but because the guy of, is singing about the girl saying something about have breakfast at Tiffany. Well, that, I've heard of different things where like jewelry stores will do like these events for men to get them to buy jewelry. Sometimes it's like food. Sometimes it's like somebody tell us what the breakfast at Tiffany song. Yeah. Anyway, so but she got right. a lot of pretty pretty boys. She calls friends. So she likes expensive things and hot guys. <laughs> She's living a life. Yeah. How they dance in the courtyard, sweet summer sweat. Ugh, that's an interesting line. So sweet that's gross sweat. to you, and I liked that one. Sweet summer sweat? Yeah. What? Yeah. Please. Because, you know, like, when, when there's, like, summertime hits, and there's something about the excitement. Okay, like, springtime brings, like, this, like, sort of excitement, like... Well, you know how everything kind of comes down to like sexual stuff, the sexual vibes for me, but like springtime is very like, hey, like, I don't know, <laughs> like on Bambi, you remember that part where everybody was Twitter painted? When she got shot? No! In the springtime when all everybody was like noticing everybody, so it's like that, woo, like that, but then summertime has like that, like, that heat to it. And so like when you think about like the, the summer sweat thing to me was just like, it's hot, but it's like, but there's a sweetness to it because there's a passion involved in it. And like, that's what I think. But you just think grossness? Well, it's just, it's like, it's like the thong thing. I just think the idea of a thong is gross. Yeah. But a lot of other people find it aesthetically pleasing. And I guess sweating. Sweaty sex is gross to you? First of all, he didn't say anything about sex. Yeah, but he said, yeah, like, yeah. They're dancing in the courtyard, so unless but they're having some big public <laughs> No, I don't think that's what's happening. What the hell is wrong with you? No, but I just went there because you were making it like set, uh, sweat is so gross, and I'm like, well, in every context? Could you really? But to call it sweet, sweet is something that you taste. So it's like, to say sweet summer, summer sweat is, ugh. Nasty, because you're combining tasting with sweat. Oh, well, I wasn't doing that. Well, that's what I was doing. That's Sweet was as in, like, yeah, I see what you're saying. You're melting you down Take here. it that way, but... Some dance <laughs> to remember. Down. You're melting down. <laughs> Some dance to remember, a dance to forget. So I called up the captain. Please bring me my wine. Yeah. He said, we haven't had that spirit here since 1969. So... You know, al spirits is another word. Of yeah, for way to talk about alcohol. Yeah. And it's 1976, so it's not even 10 years. So it's eight year old wine? Yeah, I guess. But are you sure he means that? What else could it mean? I just thought he meant there's no drinking here. I don't know. We haven't had that spirit here since 1969. So it seems like there was, there was, there was a no certain more... type of wine that he wanted. Maybe. No, he just said, bring me my or wine. they he don't said, have wine in I general. I don't think they have wine. Since 1969, okay. they haven't had any wine. They don't have any wine since 1969. Okay. That must be significant historically, and we have no idea what that's referencing. <laughs> Indians! <laughs> <laughs> maybe some of our uh, old school heads in the village can, yep. can help us out. Inform us. So maybe it's only, so there's only hard, because he doesn't say we don't have any spirits. He's just saying we don't have wine. So That's true. Maybe it's other. That's true. Maybe, maybe it's it like, like hard that. liquor and yeah. all that junk. Yeah. And these voices calling from far away wake you up in the middle of the night just to hear them say, "Welcome to Hotel California." Okay, so this one. <laughs> Remember when that homeless guy shared with us his uh, his fireball? Was that what it was called? Fireball. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I, did that I did that for the culture. <laughs> that was so <all> nice. <laughs> you had some? Yes. Stuck for a lot. I did. Oh no, we, we're getting some uh, Adja and Jenna for a dose for that one. Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, so this one is different. So the girl that he meets in the hotel um, ends up, he's, I guess he's following her around or they get together or whatever, but he sees that she's, it, it just seems to me about the excess. No, excess. how they dance in the courtyard. To me, that sounds like he's on the, the bit, you know, like his little porch area and he's looking down into the courtyard. He's watching this going He's watching on. her. Yeah, so he's so, watching some excess going on. And then he says, hey, bring me my, so, some So it's, it's just about money, sex, hard liquor. No, it never said sex. I brought sex into it. There was no sex there. Well, she's got a lot of pretty boys she calls friends. At least, at minimum, sexual in innuendo. She's got a bunch of dudes. And it's a dance to remember and a dance to forget. So it's like... There's nothing, like, significant really happening. Hmm. It's, like, forgettable. Like, in the moment, it looks like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing, da-da-da. But, but if you do it long enough, you forget it. Huh. 
You see what I'm saying? It's like a yeah. dance to remember to dance to forget because there's nothing significant happening. Yikes. And it's just a bunch of hard liquor and partying and money. So then if you connect that to California, I guess that's what they're saying is California. Maybe it's the introduction to the rock star lifestyle. Okay. Right? What are these voices? Remember, he keeps hearing these voices, honey. You can't keep scrolling up and down like that. Are these guys British? Well, what does that have to do with anything? Because, like, you know, like, coming from... Maybe if you come from some small town in London, you know, like the Beatles or whatever. Yeah. Because all, all the old school bands we listen to, they're all British. Okay. Like Queen. Queen's not an American band. They're, like, British. Yeah. So what is that? So so you come from a that. small town in... in, in, in in yeah. the UK or whatever, then you fly over, then you make it in America, then boom, now you're in, now you're in California, and then you're exposed to all this, you know, excess and women and cars and mm -hmm. you know expensive stuff or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So Hotel California is so. Then if you look, so but he's driving, his head grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. It's interesting that it says, I heard the mission bell. The mission bell would be like... What's the mission bell? I, to me, I thought that that was like, you know, like the Salvation Army, you know, they've got their, you know, is there the mission bell. He hears ah. that and then he looks at the, the hotel and he's like, this could be hell. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, what's the connection there? This could be heaven or this could be hell. Like, he hears it, but like, I don't know if it's like... He's not at the mission. But is it that, that heaven is close by? Because is that what the tiredness is supposed to be? Like, he grew tired and he doesn't know if he died or he's... I don't know. Keep going. I don't know about these voices. There were voices down the corridor. I heard them say... I thought I heard them say. Where? Oh, I he thought says, I, I thought heard, I heard them, them say. say. Okay. Welcome to Hotel California. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. Plenty of room at the Hotel California. Any time of year, you can find it here. Okay. Keep scrolling. He talks about the voices again. Okay, and still those voices are calling from far away. Wake you up in the middle of the night just to hear them say, Welcome to the hotel. They just keep saying welcome. But then when he said, Bring your alibis. Right. What was that? What a nice surprise, bring your alibis. Because people are doing all types of evil shit there. They're doing bad stuff. So he, so he... It's a place for bad people. It's not a good place. So he's singing all nice and shit, but it's spooky because it's like... Oh, it's a lovely place. Bring your alibis. And we're all prisoners here. And then you can't leave. So it's like, it's not a place well, for good people. Well, it kind of goes to your theory of hell. Well, you it's know? not my theory. It's it's Robin's theory. Okay. I don't know if he's talking about hell. No, I no, think no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the song. You know how you talk about your theory of hell and you make, and you're like, it, you, it, you can have everything that you wanted, but you realize how much you don't want those things. So like excessive, like so much excess oh, all yeah, the time. Oh, yeah, I got that from Dante. Yeah. Right. yeah. So like that that whole idea, yeah. and like when you think of it, because it says something to remember, something to forget, like. I do think, though, that being, being friends with some of these people in the music industry, I do get the feeling in their, in their you know, I'm not going to. I'm being very general here, but I do get the feeling that they thought it was going to be... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then they get it, but then it's like, eh. Yeah. So I can imagine being from some small town, because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, by this time, America is like, hey, and then, yeah, you make it to America, hey. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. the pinnacle of America is basically New York or California. Yeah. Right? So like, oh, wow, and... Mirrors on the ceiling, hey. But don't we all experience that in, like, smaller ways? Like, even as something as stupid as going to... Were you going to say something? Well, no, I'm just looking at the third verse. Even as something as stupid as going to a restaurant, and you're like... But when you're driving there, you're like, oh, I want this food. Oh, my gosh, I want that food so badly. Like, when you're really hungry, and yeah. you have it in your head what you're going to eat, and then you order it. But then, like, when you're eating it, you first start, you're like, yes, this is exactly... And then as you're eating it, you're starting to be like, meh, you know? And then you kind of hit a point where you're like, okay, I'm done. And if you keep going, you're like, you could be done from that forever you know what I mean like well it's like that situation we ran into in in Boston for one of our trips where there's a specific place that we like to eat and the the food is great it's yeah. legendary yeah. but then you know s stuff happened where I was like ah. yep yep in the master's chamber see look at this See, the, look at this. Mirrors on the ceiling pink champagne on ice and she said so she's there in the room with yeah. me we're all just prisoners here of our own device. That's like the Dantean yeah, understanding of, our of, own device. of, of yeah. hell. Is that you're you're 
if you're like a sexual whatever in on the earth and you're going to be like that on, on 50 million, but then you're going to realize that you're trapped in it and there's no escape. Or if you're a glutton, you know, in Dante and they kept feeding the guy over and over again uh, and he didn't want to eat anymore, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we're prisoners here of our own device. And this is this song is spooky as hell. Mm -hmm. In the master's chambers, they gather for the feast. They stab it with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast. Yikes. Which is what you're talking about, like eating, but you can't kill the beast, which is, I'm assuming, your propensity to consume. You know, because you're, you're, wow. you want to eat something, and you can't satiate that hunger. I That line, I thought, was that... They gathered for the feast, but the the beast, what, what they were going to eat, isn't even dead yet. And they're stabbing at it, but they can't get it. They can't kill it. Mm -hmm. Like, they can't awesome. never, they can never satisfy that. They can never get it to. Yeah, so I, I think it could be hell. Last thing I remember running for the door, I tried to find the passage back to the place I was, was before. Relax, said the night man. We're programmed to receive. You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Yikes. I need to check out. You know, you check out in a hotel. You tell the hotel yeah, that you're Yeah, but what is it in out. here? Yeah, well, you can check out, but you can't you're leave. You're in the Hotel California, so you're in this hotel. Mm -hmm. And you can check out. You can say, I'm leaving, but you're not really going to leave. That's just on paper, but you're not going anywhere. It does sound like hell. Spooky as hell. Yeah, it could, it could be. I mean, I could see I could see how all those conspiracy theories happen. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, why wouldn't you want people to listen to this? As a Christian, I would love for people to listen to mm -hmm. this. I'd say, yeah, you want to go to hell? Go for it. Because it's, it's going to appear like this, but you're going to want to leave and you won't be able to. Yeah, yeah. Like this to me is like, you want, all, you want everybody listening to this. Song. Yeah. Like, why would you want to keep? Because it's not glorifying it. Whatever it is, I don't think it's about hell, though. I think it's about California. As the, the lifestyle. I think it's, and I think it's like the last vestiges of like trying to hold on to who you were before you become Hollywood. You see what I'm saying? Like, because every band does this when they're trying to deal with fame. I don't know what record this was in their discography. Um, I guess the name of the the name of the record was. To well, because it's 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 only one way. So the hotel oh. they're programmed to receive, but they're not programmed to let people go. Ooh. So it's 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 like that lifestyle is just about consuming. It's not about letting people be who they actually are, and like you can never leave it. So what I think Jeez. is is like once you cross a certain line of fame, like you can never go back. Mm -hmm. So I think this is chronicling like his. Like trying very hard to maintain his own identity and keep himself and not get sucked into it, and then he failed. Yeah. And he basically said, "I went Hollywood." And wow. You know, um. Wow, that's intense. That is a, and such a beautiful way of singing it. But that I think that's the point, right? Yeah. It's, it's very alluring, and yep. you like it, and hypnotic, and yeah. And but in reality, it's it's there to. And if you don't get down and hear the nitty gritty of it, you would just think. If like I said, when I listened to it, I just thought it was a song about getting to a hotel and having great sex. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, it but th this is probably one of the most best written songs of all time because of like it's legendary. Oh, yeah. It's legendary. You know. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The last resort is the the last name of the song. Pretty maids all in a row. I mean. I would like to hear more of their stuff. Yeah. Last Resort. Life in the Fast Lane. So I think it's. I think it's them like trying to come to grips with it. You know, Korn did it with Got the Life when they were trying to come. They were coming to grips with mm -hmm. their newfound success. So this is probably a record like after they blew up. Uh -huh. So they probably blew up, became big band and then all the stuff. And then now he's trying to wrestle with. Oh, you know what's funny is is uh, I have more respect for a drummer who sings than for a guitarist who sings. Yeah. Because I, I mean I I can do it. I can I can play if, if if the riff is simple enough. I can play guitar and sing. But drummers like they got to keep a beat and they're doing stuff with their feet. And you're moving like this, so you would think it would affect. Yeah. And, right. Right. And and, <laughs> and he. And, I don't know if he's the lead. Is that guy the lead singer? Let us know. I don't know. He's I, I love that raspy sound.
Yeah. His voice has. And then all of them, but again, this is kind of, this is kind of like Queen. Now I'm not comparing them to Queen mm -hmm. live because they're not, but they can all sing. Mm -hmm. When this guy had a 12 string guitar, and the other thing, guitar tech people, why does he have a 12 string guitar and a regular guitar? Why does he have that dual guitar? And why, I mean, does it go to different pedals? How could you even make that go to different pedals? What's the point of, of, of having that? So I'd like to Couldn't know. you have both of them tuned to different sounds? Yeah, it could be different tuning. <clears throat> I was thinking, the only thing I think of is going to a clean channel to a, dirty, to a distorted channel or whatever, but I don't see how you can do that with whatever. But it's probably the tuning thing. But you got a 12 string guitar there and whatever. Anyway. Um... So this is a, this is probably one of the best. So you got like Danny Filth level lyrics, right? Mm -hmm. Which are just 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 prose and poetry. But I think this is one of the best lyrics we've ever re read because of the of the way in which that you can justifiably interpret it differently. Yeah. Like people always say, "Oh, it's art. You can make it say anything you want." No, you can't. <laughs> Like, like, they're, like, for example, the song that we did yesterday with uh, Death mm -hmm. and the guy was talking about losing innocence. Like, you can't turn that into space travel. Right, right. Like, there's a certain level where art is objective and yeah. you, you can't just make it say anything you want it to say. Mm -hmm. This song, though, you could justifiably go in a bunch of different yeah, directions. Yeah, you could. You really could. And, and have it justifiably stick. And I think it takes a lot of talent to be able to do that. Mm hmm it takes a lot of talent to be able to, to, to make that happen and still say something significant. Mm -hmm. So I think this is some of the best writing we've seen in, in a while. Yep. And again, these guys, I'm glad we did it live because those two, the guitarists, were really yeah. like, friendly yeah. with each other and stuff. Yep. I like when band I mean, members like each other. it sounded so good. Well, that, that was the other thing I was going to say is, is that just a separation of <laughs> talent level mm -hmm. with these bands yeah. is just mind-blowing Yeah, to me. for real. It's just mind-blowing. Like, because I'm thinking to myself, like, how much better could the... Same thing with Queen. How much better... Same thing with Pearl Jam. How much better could the studio version be than I this? I know. How much... How, where else could you go? <laughs> like, what else is there to do? Like I, I honestly, I, uh, this is this is just really, really. There are some bands that people like. I really wish you didn't get introduced to them by the live thing, and I'm glad that this is the first introduction mm -hmm. to this band. For really, sure. really good Me song. Too. I really enjoyed it. What do you give the song? Oh, a ten. This is a ten for sure. Yeah, no question. ten for sure. What do you give the live performance? I think the live performance is a ten as well. I yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at these guys, they don't look very Hollywood. The guy's got a thing no. on his head. He's got I a know. plaid shirt and regular jeans. Yeah, you know, like they're not, they're not, they're not Hollywood. So I think, like, I think they would have a hard time with, you know, landing in California. Mm -hmm. Whereas Metallica, they were they were born and raised in. I don't know. No, Lars was um, he's yeah, European. Transition. He's Dutch or something, mm -hmm. but. They were all in California, yeah. and they were all part of some scene. Whereas these guys don't look to me like no, they like honestly, like honestly, I would walk by these guys and not even know who the hell they were. Mm -hmm. But if like Metallica was walking down the street, like the four of them, like I would know something's going on with those guys. Mm -hmm. Like they're 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 special dudes. Yeah. So anyway, hopefully, inshallah, all these Nobody guys. Who's that still show? Alive. The Somebody Hill Hillbillies. Beverly or? Hillbillies. Yeah. Like if they said, if somebody said put these two people out there and said, these were either like extras in the Beverly Hillbillies or these people were like part of a major band. I would have said, oh, they were extras. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Beverly. Lemmy looks like a rock star to me. The dude, uh, uh, Halford, like just, just uh, uh, even like, okay, look at the way he dresses and mm -hmm. things like that. Like, okay, this guy, God was like, this guy's going to be a rock and roll mm -hmm. guy. I feel like God looked at these guys and said, you can work in a farm? Yep. Or you can write a legendary song. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's Your up to choice. you. Your choice. But Halford, like, there was only one choice for that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. Halas. Anyway. Incredible. It's a ten. Really, yep. ten. Ten for me. Ten all around. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.